Today on Hands-On Photography, we are going to continue our discussion regarding flash and light and, oh, it's just going to be so much fun. But we're talking about light modifiers. What exactly is a light modifier? Stay tuned. I'm going to tell you. Hands-On Photography is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Using the same password everywhere is a security nightmare waiting to happen. LastPass easily creates unique passwords for every site. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This, this is twit. twit. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Matt Pruitt, and this is Hands-On Photography here on Twit TV. I hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable, as always. It's another fine Thursday here on the network where I get to sit down and share with you different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post-processor. This week, we're going to focus more on the photography side, not the post-processing side. But before we get into that, I want to take a few seconds to say welcome to all of you that are just now checking out the show for the very first time. And if this is your first time, consider subscribing right now. Go ahead and open up your favorite podcast app, whether it's uh, Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, whatever they call their service. Go ahead and subscribe to Hands-On Photography. And if you're not sure how to find us that way, you can just go to the website, twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands-on photography. And you'll see all of our subscription options over there. Even our YouTube channel. You can even subscribe to the YouTube channel. So go ahead and subscribe there as well. That way you can see my beautiful face all on your screen. (laughs) Just kidding. All right. Thank you very much for all of the support. So let's go ahead and get started with this week's episode. Previously, back on episode 40, I believe, episode 40, I talked about using speed lights in your photography. One of these things right here. And this is the speed light that I actually use now that I think about it. Uh, we talked about using speed lights and setting the power and changing the angles and it and how it will give you different effects uh, as far as lighting your subject. OK, so now I asked you to, to do a little bit of practice with that. Uh, and I gave you a couple of weeks, actually, because I know this is something that you can't just do in a day. You can't just do it in a week, quite frankly. It takes a lot of practice. So now we're going to iterate on that and we're going to talk about light modifiers. Okay. So what is a light modifier? In every sense of the word, it is what it is. Uh, It modifies the light. Okay. So right here, I'm showing you the speed light that we used in in episode 40, but it looks a little bit different because it has on the tip of it, a light modifier. Okay. So this particular light modifier is is just, uh, I think I may have spent 10 bucks on it. If that it attaches to the front of your flash and it allows you to have a little bit more control over the light that is coming out of that speed light. Cause in general, when you're talking about using light, um, light is, it's pretty, uh, pretty all over the place when it comes to just firing up a bulb, whether it's using a flash or just firing up an LED panel or um, uh, just a, a solid continuous light if you have one of those types of uh, lighting kits. So when you fire up a bulb, the light just goes all over the place. What you need to do is to add a modifier to it. And a modifier can be anything. It could be this little... Um, soft box that goes onto the the, the tip of your speed light. It could be a reflector that's going to take the light and sort of make it bounce out a little bit wider if it has to. It can be a snoot, something that's going to make it even more narrow. Or it could be a typical soft box, like what we'll talk more about today. Soft boxes are awesome modifiers for photography, whether it's a portrait shot, whether it's a product shot. They're great and they're super duper versatile. And there's actually it's a whole bunch of different types of soft boxes. And we'll talk about a handful of those here today. Now, the key about soft boxes is, is after that light shines through the, the modifier soft box, it's going to come through a couple of different levels of diffusion. And diffusion is basically taking your light and making it a little bit more flattering onto your subject. Right now, you're looking at a key light here in my home studio, and it's behind a soft box because if I didn't have that key light on there, the light is going to come out really, really hard and really, really harsh, and it's going to make the shadows on my face look really, ugh, they're going to look really bad. The background is going to look really weird, blown out. It's 
not good. But if you have diffusion over your light, it softens it up and makes everything look even better. You know, especially skin. Skin tends to smooth out everything. And another diffuser that's out there uh, that or light modifier that's out there that most people tend to forget is a standard window. If you have a, a room that's, that's lit naturally from the sun, as that sun comes through that window, the sunlight is being diffused and that, that light is being modified to look a little bit better into your room and into your scene. If you happen to be shooting a scene next to a window, it makes a world of difference. Okay. So now let's talk about the soft boxes in particular. You can get them ranging anywhere from 20 bucks, uh, depending on the size and how they're made and manufactured and things like that, up to a couple of hundred dollars. Just all depends. Uh, the standard soft box that I would have people uh, start out with is a three foot by two foot uh, rectangular one. And if you don't want to go that large, at least go with a one foot by one foot. And that way you're going to be able to shine some light through it and get a little bit of diffusion and soften the light. They come in a lot of different uh, sizes and shapes, uh, anywhere from a square size, rectangular size, uh, or typically like what I like to use are the round parabolic ones or octobot styles. That's going to look, a, it's going to give you a bit of a different effect and a different um, a level of control regarding the light coming through that soft box. So when, when light is shining through a soft box, whether it's rectangular or, um, or circular, like what we're talking about here with my key light, the light shines, shines into the box and the inside of the box has usually a reflective layer. And then it has a level of diffusion, sometimes two levels of diffusion. And as that light is shining through that soft box and reflecting out, it's coming more out in a concentrated pattern, if you will instead of coming out just all of one big ball and just falling off into darkness. But you're able to get it and concentrate it into a particular pattern to where, in this instance, if you look at my key light here, it's shining down onto my face and it wraps around my face and it even sort of accentuates my cheekbones and my jawline and gives a little bit of shadow and it falls off. And it makes my face look just a lot better and look a little bit more natural. Now, you can do the same thing with a square softbox. It's going to be the same uh, principle for the most part, but the round boxes tend to give you a little bit more wrap when it comes to modifying the light. Uh, I have a couple different uh, parabolic softboxes that I love to use in a varying size, starting at about 22 inches, and it still gives me that same level of, of diffusion. Uh, then I have another 28 inch and then I have another 36 inch. Now, the let's let's take a look at the 20, 22 versus the 28. That smaller softbox is going to be a really, really narrow beam of light coming through versus the 28 inch. So when it's coming through at a concentrated beam, it's, it's diffused, but it is going to be a little bit harder light versus the larger softbox, because in theory, when you're working with light, the softness of the light is based on the relative size of the light to your subject. So if I have a tiny, tiny, uh, like a spot flash or something like this, this like a loom cube or anything like that, and use it to flash my subject, it's going to be a really, really hard light if the subject is, say, my face, because my face is much larger than that tiny little loom cube light. Now, compare that to a big 22-inch, 28-inch uh, softbox it's a little bit, the, the softbox is much bigger and it makes the light bigger. And the bigger you make that softbox, the softer it's gonna make that light and the, the better it's gonna look on my skin, okay? Now, when you're dealing with these softboxes, again, make sure you have all of the equipment that you need, such as light stands and C-stands, where we talked about those on episode 43. Most of them come with some sort of a Bowens mount or S mount uh, already attached to the back of them. If you don't have that capability, you can buy these little brackets like these here, these S mount brackets or Bowens mount brackets and adapt your softbox so you can attach a speed light. So you can attach a monolight uh, or whatever type of light system that you may have. You just have to take a look at all of the description information and see what works best for you. And again, these things are outstanding 
and we can really play around with them and get a lot of different performance out of them. One thing that I like to do is take a look at a grid option regarding the soft boxes, because, yeah, sometimes I want that light to be big and wide and, and soft. But every now and then I want to take that that light and just tame it down just a little bit. Sometimes it's a little bit too wide for my subject. So what I like to do is take what's called a grid and place that grid onto the soft box or onto the modifier because you can do it on pretty much any light that's out there. And the grid is going to take the light and cut it down just a touch and allow it to come out a little bit more narrow than what the soft box is designed to do. And it's not going to work for every use case. It's just something that you need to do from time to time, depending on your subject matter. Use it as a way to concentrate the light and really concentrate the light and really just show off the particular subject, not so much the background and ambience, if you will. All right. But that is it. That that's this week's show. I wanted to share different options about using light modifiers and different types of soft boxes out there. Again, I'm a big fan of the parabolic ones because of just how big they are and the spread that you get and the portability of them, because most of them just collapse down to the size of an umbrella and they're really, really easy to pack away and store or put in the trunk of your car and carry them to a shoot or anything like that. Uh, and they last a little bit longer because they're built a little bit better. In my opinion, your mileage may very. We'll put some links in the show, the show descriptions and show notes uh, to let you check out a couple of different options uh, that I use. And, uh, and if you're interested in them, you can check them out on our Amazon affiliate links and so on and so forth. All right. So that's it for this week, folks. Again, thank you for all the continued support. If you have any questions for me, feel free to shoot me an email. That's hop at twit.tv. I'm more than happy to take, take a look at the images that you've been working on or answer the questions that you may have about photography or smartphone photography or post-processing, anything. I love hearing from you and I love helping you folks out. Now, stay tuned. I'm going to give you a couple of weeks to take a look at different modifiers and see if you can add them to your game. All right. And then we're going to do some more hands on shooting with these modifiers, with these flashes, with these continuous light setups. And we're even going to pull out our trusty smartphones and use some light modifiers taking smartphone photography, too, because folks, it's not about the, the, the big fancy cameras, just all about the story. And I don't care what kind of camera you have. It's going to be fun. All right. Okay, folks, until then, make sure you subscribe, make sure you're sharing at the show. I hope you all continue to do well out there and be well during these interesting times. Now, safely create and dominate. And I am still looking for justice for Brianna Taylor. Y'all take care. One more twit? Well, you gotta check out iOS Today. That's the show where Leo Laporte and I cover everything you need to know about iOS. It's the best apps, the best games, and everything you can do with your iPad, your iPhone, and your Apple Watch, plus car kit and so much more. twit.tv slash iOS.